Hey guys, Leanne here on Grady's Mom. I have a cooking video for you today. This is volume 32. It is an Italian pasta chicken bake. It's my own recipe. However, it's kind of a variation of a lot of things that my mom did growing up. My mom did a lot of pasta bakes and sort of the foundation for a pasta bake is just pasta with some kind of meat and some kind of sauce with cheese and you just bake it all together. So it's sort of a two-step process because you boil the pasta and then you bake it. So for this one, I actually made this, I believe last month, I shared a picture on my Instagram and I got a ton of DMs and messages and comments to please share it or please tell you guys how to make it. So I figured now that I'm getting back into the swing of things with being able to film cooking videos, I feel like this is the perfect recipe to share first to kick off the back to school season. So this is a great one to make um, if you're home or maybe you work at home or you're a stay-at-home mom, this is a great one to make while your kids are at school. You don't even have to bake it. You can just assemble it and throw it in your fridge. And then all you have to do when it's time for dinner is throw it in the oven and it's ready. So it's definitely like a one dish meal. For this recipe, you're gonna need some olive oil, extra virgin I have here. You're gonna need some pasta of your choice. I've only made this again once, um, this exact recipe. Um, once last month and I used the bow tie pasta the farfalle which I really liked with it a lot you're gonna need some Parmesan cheese some kind of tomato or marinara sauce whatever you choose if you make yours homemade that would be even better here I just have like a Publix brand meat flavored pasta sauce um, I actually had this left over from a recipe last week so I'm gonna go ahead and utilize that some minced garlic you can also use fresh minced garlic I have some fresh parsley here. You can use dried parsley if that's all you have. Here I have some chicken. I actually made a whole chicken in the crock pot. I have a whole video on how to do that. I'll link it down below. But I saved some, or I just had some leftover um, white meat. There's a little dark meat in here. It's mainly chicken breast and chicken thigh um, that I chopped up sort of in like little bite-sized pieces. Um, so I have that in here. This is about two cups of meat. And then I also have some red onion that I diced up pretty small. Um, I actually had made something else um, earlier this morning. So since I knew I was going to need this later, I just did both, you know, all the portions of the onion. So again, it's just like a little bit of red onion, probably about a third of a cup. You're going to need some mozzarella cheese, and then you're going to need some fresh tomatoes. Obviously, I'm not going to use all these tomatoes. I just grabbed this bowl. Um, this is what we picked from our garden last night. So I'm going to use some of these tomatoes, and I will, as always, have all the quantities and amounts and everything typed up down below. So I'm going to go ahead first and get my pasta boiling up in some salted water. Okay, so I just threw my pasta in to some salted water. And it always says on the box how many minutes to cook it for. This one says 11 to 12, so I set my timer for 11 because you don't want to overcook your pasta because you're going to be baking it. So if you overcook it and then you bake it, it's going to be more mushy. So I'm just going to do it at 11 minutes on the dot. I'm going to drain it. And in the meantime, I'm going to get everything else prepped so the pasta can go right in and we can bake this off. Okay, guys, so... While my pasta is boiling, I'm going to take advantage of this time while the pasta is going to get everything prepped. I have a 9 by 13 dish here. Um, you could also do two smaller dishes, like you could do two like 8 by 8 dishes. Uh, maybe if your family is smaller or if you want to freeze one. We are only a family of three, however, this does make a lot, as you can imagine, but we will have um, half tonight and half for leftovers. Um, again, if you want, you can freeze half, whatever you want to do. Obviously, if you're a larger family, this will be like a one, you know, a one dish dinner and it's done. So in this pan first, I'm going to start out by drizzling a little bit of olive oil on the bottom, which will A, help it to not stick and B, help to create the sauce. So this jar here that I had left over, now I'm going to add just a little bit. I'm not going to add what's left in the entire jar because this is not going to be like a purely tomato based sauce. It's just going to have sort of the essence of it. I'm also going to add about a teaspoon of minced garlic. So it is going to have the essence of tomato, but it's not going to be maybe what you'd imagine in your mind that it's a completely tomato based sauce. So next I'm going to add, I'm going to put everything in and we're going to kind of 
Mix it all up here. We're going to add the onion, which I chopped up earlier, like I said. I'm going to add about half the parsley, fresh chopped parsley. Again, you can add dried if that's what you have. Well, I know a lot of people keep that on hand. And I'm going to also add some Parmesan cheese, which we're going to add more Parmesan cheese later on top. And then I'm going to add a little bit more olive oil to the top of this mixture because it looks a little dry and the cheese will soak up some of that. And then now we're just going to stir this together right in the pan. Just kind of see the consistency of what we have here. It's actually going to be like, again, a tomato sort of essence, but believe it or not, a majority of the moisture is going to come from the olive oil because we're going to add more of that. Okay, so just kind of judging from what I see, I'm going to need a little bit more tomato sauce. I've always, I always say in my videos that it's better to add less so that you can add more rather than add too much and then you can't take it away. So I'm just kind of eyeballing it and just combining everything so that everything kind of gets mixed in together. And then I'm going to go ahead and go in with a little bit more olive oil again. This is like a tomato and olive oil based sauce. I'm now going to go ahead and get my chicken. It's about two cups of chicken. Can add a little bit more, a little bit less, whatever your liking is. And I'm just going to go ahead and kind of spread this out like this. Now we are going to wait for that pasta to get done. We're going to add the pasta right on top and bring this all together. It is so easy and so good. And who doesn't love a one dish meal? Okay, guys, let's finish this off. I have my pasta that I just drained. I'm going to add about half of it. Hopefully my lens isn't fogging up. Okay, so that's about half. And first I'm going to go ahead and just kind of stir it in and incorporate it. Get all the chicken, the sauce, and because the pasta is hot, it's going to help loosen up that sauce a little bit. Perfect. Next, we're going to add some olive oil because again, we need this moist. This is a lot of stuff in here, so we need to make sure this is moist and not all dried out. So I added some olive oil. I'm going to go ahead and add my fresh tomatoes. I'm going to go ahead and add some of the mozzarella cheese. And I'm going to go ahead now and add the rest of the pasta, again, cooked pasta. And this does make a lot of food, as you can see. This is a 9 by 13 baking dish, and it's pretty full at this point. So now you're going to slowly bring the bottom to the top because you want to make sure the pasta is all getting coated. And we can always add things, but we can never take them away. So I'm just going to kind of slowly work this. The cheese is starting to melt. It smells really good. And these tomatoes are going to pop when they get baked in the oven. It's so good. So it definitely needs some more olive oil. So I'm going to go ahead and drizzle some more on. And the olive oil will not only keep it moist, it'll add flavor, and it'll also give it like a nice crust when it bakes. Okay, so we're going to keep stirring this all together. Okay, so at this point, I think it needs a little bit more tomato sauce. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more on, I don't know, about a half a cup. I'm going to do some more Parmesan cheese and see what we got here. So this looks really good, consistency-wise. Because you want it to be moist, but not really saucy. Again, just that essence of tomato. You don't want it to be kind of submerged in it. You just want the flavor and a little bit of that orangey kind of red color. It smells so good. Okay. So we're really getting somewhere now. That's the consistency that we're looking for. 
Okay, so now we're gonna do mozzarella cheese because it's gonna bake nice and bubbly. Just gonna get some mozz cheese on top. You can add as little or as much as you want. I'm gonna add, I don't know, about a medium amount. A drizzle of olive oil again. That oil on the top is gonna crisp up really nice. And even though it might look like a lot, remember I'm drizzling and I'm not dumping like cupfuls on here. Parmesan cheese, which is gonna create that nice crust between the olive oil and the mozzarella. And it also will add a salty element, so that's why I'm not adding salt. You can add a little black pepper if you want. And lastly, I'm gonna add the rest of that parsley that I reserved to top it with. I love parsley, how it looks. It just adds such a nice pop of color. And then now, my friends, it is ready to go in the oven. I have my oven preheating to 400. You could also do 375. Um, if you do 375, you're probably gonna wanna let it sit in there for about 35 to 40 minutes. And at 400, you're going to want to let it sit in there for 25 to 30 minutes, just until everything is bubbly and kind of crispy on top, and then everything else will be nice and tender. So let's go ahead and get this in the oven, and I'll share with you guys what it looks like when we get out. All right, guys, so I just pulled it out of the oven, and it's all nice and crispy. If you guys can see, like, it's a little bit kind of golden brown on the edges of the pasta. The cheese is all melty and delicious, so I'm going to go ahead and plate it up and show you guys how good it looks. Alright guys, so here it is all plated up. As you can see, I can't get too close because it will fog up the lens, but we have some melty cheese. The edges of the pasta is crispy from that olive oil. I just did some simple like Texas garlic toast on the side. It's just a perfect mix of like fresh ingredients, a few store-bought things, um, just like the Parmesan cheese, a little bit of the sauce. But it's just really good. It's fresh. It's light. And again, what I really love about it is it's not saturated in that sauce. It just has that essence of it. So it's just a really easy dish. I feel like it's a good crowd pleaser. You can substitute all different things. If you don't have chicken, you could use, you know, leftover ground beef or leftover ground turkey or leftover sausage. It's just a really good foundation to make kind of your own taste and your own preference. As always, everything will be typed up down below if you want to go ahead and try to make it yourself. Have a great day, and I will see you guys very soon. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.